So what could be the presentation ideally? So it could be a cardiac conduction abnormalities, hypotension, seizures, and ARDS. So pathophysiology. Slow is the recovery from inactivation of the fast sodium channels. Basically, this affect the sodium channels wherever it is in the brain or in the heart or anywhere it acts, it's going to affect your sodium channels. So how does it affect? It just slows the recovery from the inactivation. Basically, it inactivates. That's all it means. So this is your action potential. You can see that slope zero is because of sodium channel. So having said the tricyclic TCAs, the tricyclic acids act, act at this sodium level. So this part of action potential is hindered. So slowing of phase zero. This is the depolarization or the contraction, effective contraction curve. So it's a phase zero that's get affected. So this correlates with your QRS complex. So since the sodium channel is affected, this zero phase of action potential is affected, thus causing the QRS prolongation. Okay. Otherwise also, in any normal human, the impulse gets conducted from the SA node to AV node. From the AV node, it goes to the bundle office. From the bundle office, it gets diverted to the left branch first and then comes to the right bundle branch. There is some amount of delay in normal individual itself, but it is usually masked. So in this kind of prolongation of QRS complexes or in generalized prolongation of conduction, this minimal delay from right to left is exaggerated. Thereby, usually your patient will have RBBB. Hope you got the concept clear. In other ways, normal individual also, there will be a subtle delay to the right bundle branches. But it will be masked in our routine heart rate, like 60 to 100, usually get masked. But in this TCA toxicity, where the overall mechanism itself is prolonged, this subtle delay to the right bra uh, branch blocks will be exaggerated so your patient can present with RBBB. Remember this very concept. This is your cell. This is your membrane. Having said a membrane, it's a lipophilic membrane, it's a lipid membrane, lipid bimolecular membrane. So in alkaline pH, your drug gets bound to your lipids. In acidic pH, it gets bound to your receptors, the sodium channels. So now tell me a drug which has more amount of alkalinity. You can choose any drug which can produce alkalinity inside the patient body. Meanwhile, it is to be understood it's a sodium channel that is getting blocked, right, in this mechanism. If your drug can add a pinch of sodium, it's going to be more better. So now tell me a drug which has a pinch of sodium and also can create some amount of alkalinity. Sodium alkalinity. What is the drug? The water drug is sodium bicarbonate. So sodium bicarbonate is a treatment of choice. So how will you give? When will you give? How long will you give? When will you stop? So we'll see that. Coming to the cardiovascular system, the first presentation, what is the most common rhythm in TCA toxicity? Understand this is going to be sinus tachycardia. It could be because of anti muscarinic effect, vasodilatory because of reflux tachycardia, or primarily sympathorhythmic effects also. So the most common rhythm is sinus tachycardia. The next is going to be the white complex tachycardia. Hope I explained you in detail why there is a white complex tachycardia. White complex tachycardia is because of slowing of conduction, not because of any other MI or not any ischemic reasons. It's because of slowing of conduction where even the aberrant pathway gets activated. So when the aberrant pathway gets activated, we call this as SVT with aberrancy, supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy. Because since the primary pathway is slowed down to a such an extent that the aberrant pathway takes up. So this is called SVT with aberrancy and there will be some amount of QTC prolongation also. It has to be understood QRS is for depolarization that means a contraction basically. QT is for repolarization but in TCA toxicity this QTC prolongation is mainly because there is slow depolarization which is causing a slow repolarization also. So there is, this drug does not act on a repolarization areas at all, not at that point of the curve. But since the depolarization is very much delayed, this slowing of conduction gets through to the repolarization surface also. So there will be QTC prolongation. So patient can have tachycardia, 
and more the tachycardia, more the widening of complexes and QTC prolongation. And usually, all this wide complex tachycardias will improve with the rate control. Once a rate settles back to normal, you will be able to see that wide complex of the QRS complex and QT prolongation should come back to normalcy. But can we give any drug to control the rate directly? Answer is no. This patient will have tachycardia with various reasons. It could be an hypoxia, it could be increase in temperature, or it could be just dehydration, it could be a, a vasodilatory state. So all these things, the, the, the reason why the patient is having sinus tachycardia should be controlled, not the rate directly. Next, apart from your ECG changes, your patient can have hypotension. So why should your patient have hypotension? It could be because of direct myocardial depression because of sodium channel issues. I hope I told you. The TCA poisoning affects the sodium channel anywhere in your body. So this disrupts the, the coupling of myocytes and impairs your cardiac contractivity. Okay, And also an alpha analgesic blockade and causing peripheral vasodilatation. It down regulates adrenergic receptors and decreases response to any catecholamine of that sort. So having said this, it has to be understood again that TCAs are mainly reuptake inhibitors. What is meant by reuptake inhibitors? So there is a neuron or any, any, any nerve of that sort. It puts out norepinephrine and serotonin and to a certain extent after the action is over, this norepinephrine and serotonin is taken back called as a reuptake. It is at that level, this TCAs act and they stop this reuptake, right? Basically, this neurons or the nerves will be dried up. It has already given whatever neural has already happened, already present in it. So, if you start dopamine in this patient, how does dopamine act? It gets converted into norad and then gets action, right? So, already your nerves are dried up. It doesn't have any more norepinephrine inside it. So, there is no use in starting a dopamine which is dependent again on the noradrenaline inside your nerves. So, it's better to start noradrenaline directly than starting a pro-drug like dopamine. 